What's going on? It's Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. I am here in MIAO in Miami, uh, getting prepared, prepared for the day. I got a lot of meetings today. Um, I got a lot of things going on um, in corporate America. I got some business meetings that I need to take care of. Uh, I got some appointments and then I got a flight that I got to catch right after that. Right? So, oh, let me show you my, my little, these is what I wear on a regular basis. The guy that um, designed the foam runners and was working for Yeezy. Uh, apparently he had struck out on his own and he created some prototypes. And so I got my hands on a few pair of them and they absolutely awesome. Uh, let me kick it with y'all for a minute before I go down and get some breakfast and uh, give you my thoughts for the day prior to, why is that, let's move that back a little bit, prior to um, getting it popping because I'm not sure how much I'll be able to talk to you guys considering that I have a full day, I got flights, I got all of that, but it's a lot of conversations around and a couple days ago, my stream got cut off and it's a lot of conversations around that breakfast club interview with the Taz woman and uh, Vivek. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, so I don't want to butcher it. Um, but it's not about whether or not he destroyed her. That's the thing that I think that everybody is getting confused. It's not about whether or not he destroyed her in a debate or anything like that, but it's two red flags that we really need to start paying attention to. The first red flag is the most obvious one. It's the blatant disrespect by people in our community that look like us, uh, the Tez woman, and she never came into it, into that conversation, looking to have a genuine conversation. She came into it looking to be combative, and disruptive. And it sounds like if you start researching her background a little bit and understanding where she came from, uh, she's been in political spaces for a long time now. Hey, how you doing? She's been in political spaces for a long time now. And so when he came on a platform, um, she felt comfortable disrespecting him, right? And so what you've seen play out I don't know if you want to be on my blog. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I need to get your <laughs> No, it's cool. But what you seen play out when they were having that debate over politics or whatever, or his background and everything like that, like the argument was completely disingenuous, right? Because the, qu the questions that she was asking wasn't even relevant to anything that he was running for president for, right? She asked him about if he had did any service in high school as class president or anything like that, right? That's so silly, that's so stupid. Now you got a man that's literally created medicines that save people lives. And the fact that he's a capitalist, we supposed to ignore that because I think that people should be rewarded for the things that they do good for society. I don't see anything wrong with the idea that he get paid or he becomes rich and he offers value and a service to people and people decide to pay for that. And so we're supposed to completely ignore that because he is who he is. But in reality, what I believe that happened is that it's really blatant racism, right? She looked at him and he stands on one specific side of the aisle. So she already had her mind made up. And based off of what I've seen, right? She says that she's an independent, but uh, and I got to do a little bit more digging and understanding her because I have a feeling that she's going to pop up and be even more relevant now that she's done this interview. She's apparently done a lot of interviews, but now she's really starting to get on the radar of people. But she says that she's independent and I think that that's a smoke screen. It's a smoke screen so that you guys won't say, oh, she's a liberal or she's coming into it objectively. No, she asked completely irrelevant questions. She's tried to sound more intelligent than she really was. And everybody's seen it for what it really was. Chameleon, chameleon-esque 
chameleon-esque behavior. I'm about to go down here and get some breakfast in a little bit. You can see it in there. Chameleon-esque behavior, and we spotted it. And so not only was it blatantly disrespectful, uh, it showed her for who she really was and what her true intentions were, was not to have a conversation, but to be disruptive. And we see this on a regular basis. And you know who we see it most from? Black women. Yep, we see it most from black women. The blatant disrespect of a person that came up there to have a conversation on a platform, but instead they decided that they wanted to implement an agenda. The second red flag and the other biggest thing, uh, to be frank, that I seen personally, and maybe you guys seen some other things, but this is the biggest two things. The second thing was, if you pay attention to the interview, DJ Envy shut him down, right? And this shows the simp behavior of a lot of the guys that's in our community. And I think that DJ Envy often at times does it. And when you see it happen over and over and over again, it's not a one-time thing, it's a pattern. It's the type of person that you are. And so DJ Envy, you know, shut him down, let her continuously interrupt him and disrespect him without either either A, being fair, or B, um, you know, getting some control of the woman that was on a platform just because she's appeared on there multiple times based off of me doing a little bit of a deep dive and research on who it is that she is and where it is that she comes from, right? And so she didn't move the needle. All she did was embarrass herself and then DJ Envy embarrassed himself and then he proceeded to mop the floor with the breakfast club and it wind up making them look bad. But I hope they get the views for it because I guess that's all that it's there for. It's not necessarily there to move the needle. And this is one of the reasons why, A, you need to be careful of who it is that you, you know, align with and that just because they black don't mean that they right. Just because they stand on the side of the aisle that you may stand on don't mean that they right. Just because they can communicate a little bit better than you do don't mean that they're right. Their moral compass, their intentions, all of that. Communication is 90% body language. It's what you do, your demeanor, how you say it, you know, what your intentions are. It's all in how you present yourself and, and what you're doing more than how, how well you communicate. What comes out of your mouth is only 10% of the conversation. The other 90% of it is body language. And then the simping. When are we gonna start? Stop simping and then create a space either where you can just be objective and let people have the conversation because she interrupted this guy a gajillion times and the only when he went to answer he never even really got to answer the questions but when he when he went to answer he kept getting interrupted but then he got stopped in order to allow her to speak as though she was the run, one running for president like everybody came to see her Ain't nobody come to see you otis what this is what happens within our community. This is how we stand for black women and unruly ones. And again, it's a difference between ones that's unruly and ones that hold the line. If you if you not, if it don't fit you, then you ain't got to worry about it. Man, I love this place. But let me know what y'all think. Uh, early morning thoughts. About to go and get some breakfast. Take a quick walk around the block or something and just chill before the day starts getting really, really hectic. I love you, I appreciate you. Uh, I'ma I'm holler at y'all later.